Nano Machine by Ang Hong Weolja. Chapter 82, Get in Line, Part 1. My arm and my bone is poking out from my leg. The medical room was busier than normal. It was still a few days away from the third test, but there were many patients, and one man was very happy about this. Thanks, Yoan. It was quite boring after Yoan was sent to the prison cave, but he was now sending more patients right after his release. There were so many patients that the doctor had to choose which one to look after first. Dr. Baek Zhongmeng felt like he was in paradise. I'll go with you first. It was Chen Yuchan. He needed immediate attention as his wound had only been tied up to stop the blood. As Zhang Meng tended to the wound while grinning, an instructor Simong frowned. I thought he was weird, but how can he grin at the wounded students? Simong then looked away with disgust. There were instructors here in the medical room as there were too many patients that Zhang Meng alone could not handle them all. There was one more happy in the room. It was Oh Zhang who was from Yoan's team. Master. Oh Zhang, who woke up around noon, was angry that he had lost the yellow tag. He was also concerned about what Yoan would think of him. However, all of his concerns disappeared immediately. Ha! He had to hold back from bursting out in laughter. His anger was quenched when he saw Ha Ilming and his members along with Yu Chan and his members being carried in with heavy injuries. Master, I will serve you forever. Oh Zhang thought. He then heard the instructors amongst themselves. He really is different. It was just yesterday when I took him into this room with internal damage. An instructor who looked like he was in his early 30s spoke. It was Hien Yun, the youngest instructor. He was the instructor who took Yoan into the medical room after the first test. He never guessed that Yoan would become so strong after such a short amount of time. Who would have known? Simong shook his head. He was beyond shocked when he heard that Yoan had made Ho Jin Chong fall to his knees after just one formation. He didn't even care to watch the fight since he thought that Yoan would lose, but the outcome was unexpected. Nobody can guess the outcome of this competition. Chun Yu Chan, one of two most likely candidates, was now out of the competition. He didn't have his internal power damaged like Chun Zhang Sum, but Chun Yu Chan would have definitely passed the third test. Well, we might see some very unexpected events this time around. Airship competition. This was the sole interest that everyone had as this was directly connected to the future of the cult. There was one person who wasn't in the medical room however. It was the 108th cadet, Ha Ilming, who was taken into another room on the way. He was in the chief of the demonic academy's office. Hmm. Left guardian Li Haming moaned as he looked down at the naked Ha Ilming laid down in front of him. All of Ha Ilming's skin had veins popping out eerily. This only happened when blood flowed backward. This is blood flow reversion for sure. The veins usually went down if flow returned to normal, but Ha Ilming had passed out before he could even do that. Haming looked down at Ha Ilming with a serious look on his face and placed his hand on two blood points. Haming's hand glowed and the light was absorbed into Ha Ilming's body. Soon, Ha Ilming's body began to flinch and the veins began to squirm. Soon, it went down as the blood flow returned to normal. The skin also turned normal and Ha Ilming suddenly woke up and coughed. Arg, Ugh. NNGH. Ha Ilming coughed for quite a long time and looked down at himself. Why am I naked? That's not the important issue here. Huh? Ha Ilming looked up and saw a fiery red-haired man sitting next to him. See chief. Ha Ilming got up immediately. Ilming wasn't sure why he was here since he had been fighting with Yoan as far as he remembered. He then felt a serious headache and remembered Yoan's fist crushing his head before he passed out. Why am I here? I'm the one who's asking the questions. Ashu? How did you learn the blood flow reversion? Ha Ilming was then shocked. He looked down at himself, but he didn't see the veins. Then how did Li Haming find out about this? I don't know what you are talking about. Oomph. Li Haming sighed. He then gestured his hand to hold up something, and a powerful invisible force threw Ha Ilming up into the air. Hu H. Ha Ilming tried to fight it with his power, but the difference in power was too great for Ha Ilming to resist. See chief, what is the meaning of this? Oomph. Haming then flicked his finger, twisting Ha Ilming's left arm like a rag doll in a weird way. Eowewewewarg. Ha Ilming screamed, but the screaming didn't leave the office since the entire office was covered with Li Haming's energy. 108th Cadet, Ha Ilming of the Red Martial Sword Clan. Not affiliated with any other clan officially. This is what you wrote down when you registered. Ha Ilming closed his mouth. With his blood reversion art revealed, he couldn't spill any more. You think you can keep it from me? You think you will walk out safely with this forbidden art? Who did you learn it from? 
The art of blood flow reversion was forbidden and had most of the books had been destroyed. If Ha Ilming, a 17-year-old boy, learned that art that had been removed tens of years ago, then it meant that someone had taught him. If you don't speak, then your entire clan will suffer the consequences. It was likely that the Red Marshal Sword clan will be searched for any evidence regarding the forbidden art anyway. Ha Ilming did not speak even after such a threat. So you want your clan to come to its demise? Foolish. Haming snapped, and this time, Ilming's right leg was twisted weirdly. Arg. Ha Ilming screamed in pain and Lee Haming walked up to him. He then grabbed Ilming's chin and glared at him. I am the left guardian of the cult. Do you think I wouldn't know about the Red Marshal Sword Clan, one of two shadow sword groups of the Sword Clan? Damn it. Ai Ilming frowned. Lee Haming almost smiled, but Ha Ilming suddenly chewed on something and blood seeped out from his mouth. No. He bit his tongue to kill himself. Haming tried to open his mouth forcefully, but Ha Ilming also reversed his internal energy which was also an act of suicide. To die is a dog of that cursed clan. Ha Ilming's eyes were full of anger as died. Haming tried to calm his energy down in order to keep him alive, but there was no use. Ha Ilming shivered and soon died. Humph, so there will be no loose ends. Haming sighed and began writing something down on the paper. At dinner time, there were 50 or so cadets waiting outside the cafeteria. Then they shouted at a cadet walking up to the dormitory. There he is. The cadets then began to mumble. He's here. Prince Chen Yowen. The cadets all moaned in astonishment as Yowen began walking down with over 25 cadets behind him. I am first. No. Stay in line. Who cares? Prince. The cadets then began to rush over to Yowen. Huh? Yowen and his members became surprised. All these cadets then came up to them so Hu Bong and the other members blocked them from coming near Yowen. Move. I want to talk to the prince. Prince Chun. Please give me time to talk. I'm first. They began to argue with themselves over who could talk to Yowen first. As the cadets tried to rush in, Hu Bong flushed red with frustration and shouted. Arg. Get in line. Chapter 83, Get in Line, Part 2. Huh? Who is that? The cadets all became silent when Hu Bong started shouting. He turned red when everyone placed their attention on him but Hu Bong still continued speaking. If you want to speak to my master, get in line in the order you arrived. The cadets then began to form a line in embarrassment. Hu Bong was quite talented in taking control over awkward situations. Ko Wang Er and Jia Wu Min smiled. Hu Bong did this before too without him realizing that he could handle this sort of stuff well. All these people, you think it's to join the team? Wu Min asked. Ko Wang Er nodded. These 50 cadets were unlike the number they had ever seen until now. It seemed most of the leaderless cadets had come. Rumors spread fast. Wang Er's guess was accurate. With the lessened cadet members, everyone knew what the others were doing and so these kinds of rumors spread fast. Everyone knew that Chen Yuchan had lost. He even broke the arms and legs of the 5th cadets members. That means he won the competition against Chen Yuchan. Wait, doesn't it mean Chen Yuan has won everything this time? The rumor was now very different. Chen Yuan had proved himself many times and was now being considered as a possible candidate to the air. The cadet at the very front knelt down on both knees and shouted toward Yuan. Prince Chen. I am the 71st cadet I'm sub young. I want to help. He went down on his knees? Cadets in the back were shocked. With the first one kneeling down, the other cadets began to kneel and voice their will to join. But not all of them here were here to join Yoan's group. Some cadets had just come to see if there were any spots left for them as they heard that Yoan now had a total of six yellow tags. Chen Yoan frowned. Is it them? This rumor was spread by Chen Yuchan's members who had fled the fight. Today was the last day for the team leaders to be assigned so they spread the rumor to target Chen Yoan. Contrary to their expectations, people were begging to be taken into Yoan's group. It took a while for all 50 cadets to say their names and their intentions. The sun went down and it was already night. There weren't enough spots for everyone and Yoan's only intention was to bring in members that would stay with him forever. Yoan spoke to them politely. I want to thank you all for wanting to join my team, but I have something I want to tell you all first. Yoan then began explaining, just like when Ko Wanger and the others first came to him. He only wanted people that would join him for future battles, not just the test. So, I want people who will lead the new demonic cult with me. We will walk together on this treacherous path. If you are not willing, I am sorry but I will have to reject your offer." Yoan bowed in the end. The cadets then began to mumble to themselves and they began to leave one by one. 
Those cadets who just wanted to join for the test left without hesitation. Unlike what was expected in the beginning, not that many decided to leave. A total of 26 cadets still stayed behind. 508th Cadet Uparan who knelt on one knee bowed to speak. I wanted to join at first just for the test, but I changed my mind after listening to you. Please take me in. And it wasn't only Uparan. A total of 8 cadets changed their minds after listening to Yohan. God, is that Munku? Zhao Wumin was shocked to see one of the remaining cadets. It was 408th Cadet Munku who was from the Dragon Fist Clan. Munku was the leader of the group that Zhao Wumin was in during the second test, so he knew him. He didn't know that Munku was here as he silently stayed in the middle of the other cadets. Why is he here? Munku was one of the top 10 powerful cadets in the academy. Why doesn't he have a yellow tag? This didn't make sense. Munku was already an experienced master level warrior who should have gotten a yellow tag. Munku then came up to Yoan and asked, Prince Chun, can I speak to you? Munku? Yoan had also noticed him during one of the tests, so knew who he was. However, Munku was limping when he got up. You have six tags, right? Yoan nodded. Munku then raised his eyebrows and spoke with anger and bitterness. One of them is mine. Yoan frowned at such a weird claim. Munku continued, my tag was taken by Chen Yuchan of the Blade Clan. Munku then began to explain what had happened to him. He had taken the yellow tag on the third day, but Yuchan came to him and told him to join his group. I'm sorry. I don't side with anyone. Munku refused but Yuchan approached him two more times to ask him to join. Munku still declined the offer. He then asked me to duel. Yuchan insisted and didn't back down, and at last Munku lost the duel. Yuchan broke his left leg and right arm and threatened him to join Yuchan's team if he didn't want to fail the test. Medbestak. Baki spat as he listened to Munku's story. I was going to get revenge on him after I joined some other group and, and. Munku teared up. No one wants me with my broken arm and leg. He thought he would be able to join the others since he was still a master level warrior, but the other group leaders refused him coldly, saying that Munku would need to heal first. One group accepted me, but I was cast out after an hour. I later found out that Chen Yuchan sent one of his men to tell other groups to not take me in. Munku then became angry at someone for the first time in his life. So, I wanted to get revenge as soon as I healed up. I didn't care about the third test anymore, and that's when I heard what you did. Munku was able to hear Chen Yuchan's downfall just one minute after his decision. I'm not sure if I have the right to be happy though. He felt good that Chen Yuchan was in pain but it didn't feel like he had fulfilled his wish since he couldn't do it on his own. Munku sighed and looked up at Yoan. So, with that said, I want you to take me in. Huh? Yoan frowned. He understood Munku was in a bad spot, but what was this about? Munku then knelt down with his limp legs. I'm sorry. My depression made me say weird things. I am just asking you to take me in, not judging me by my broken arm and leg. Munku was here to meet Yoan as his last resort. If Yoan did not take him in, then Munku had no way but to fail the third test. Zhao Wumin then sent a telepathic message to Yoan. A master. You must take in Munku. Yoan became curious and Wumin sent him another message. Munku is the grandson of the ninth elder, Munyun. One of twelve elders of our cult.